I'm here to bring you the top five features in the Power BI November 2018 update. Now, number one is pretty amazing, but it needs something extra. At the end of this video, you can also access the complete playlist for the highlights of all the recent Power BI updates. Hey, I'm Avi Singh, Power BI Pro and Microsoft MVP. And my goal is to make you a pro in Power BI. And if you would like that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell so you are notified whenever I go live to answer your Power BI questions. We're going to cover the five key features in the Power BI November update. Now, number five around Q&A holds a lot of promise, but let's start at number one. Now, if there are any updates that you would like to see in Power BI, make sure to leave them in the comments so we can all vote for them. So the number one feature is the new modeling view. Now, that's the biggest change we've seen in the modeling environment in Power BI but I could use a little bit more there, but let's dive in and see what it's about. So the modeling view is a preview feature. So make sure to turn it on uh, if you're using it right now. Uh, once you do turn it on, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see another icon over here. Now, oddly enough, if you hover over it, they both say relationships. Well, it stopped working. There we go, relationships and relationships. But this one, which has a slightly different icon, is the new relationship view. Now, look closely. So right now, we are in the classical relationship view, all right? And now I'm gonna switch to the new modeling view. Now. Well, the layout feel looks a little bit different, but it's essentially showing me the exact same tables. But believe me, this is so powerful. So let's get started. So you can select multiple elements and edit them in bulk, uh, uh, changing their format and things like that. Uh, you can also do is specify description for elements, including uh, tables or your columns or your measures. Now, this is a great feature which used to exist in Power Pivot, but I missed that in Power BI. And why it is so amazing is that it lets you automatically document the model based on the metadata you specify in the model itself. So essentially create a data dictionary for your model. Now I am going to do a future video on this, so watch out for that and I'm gonna link it right here in this video when it's available. So the first thing here is when you select any element, be it a table, be it a column, or a measure, now you have a rich set of parameters available here, which you can quickly change around modeling, some which have not been available earlier. One of those is the display folder. Now what that does is lets you organize your elements, specifically measures, in folders of its own. So what I've done here is I have put some of my measures into a sub subfolder so everything is under, under sales measures and then some of them are in order and some of them are in sales now when you go to the reporting view what's going to happen is over on this side at the same organization that I've set in my model uh, let's try that again you can see that over here so all my measures well I forgot about this one but everything else is in this display folder and within that you have subfolders for my order measures and and uh, my sales measure now this was obviously something arbitrary because I just wanted to show you the uh, the display folders but in complex models, often we end up with hundreds and hundreds of measures. So this would give you a, a very flexible and effective way to organize measures, not just for yourself, but for the sake of your end users as well, who would be connecting to the model to create their own reports. One other thing that we have in the modeling view is ability to create multiple views. Uh, and you can simply do that using the plus button over here. And I've already done that here. So once you click plus, then you can add some tables on it as you like. And I've already created one view here, sales. And what this can do is give you a simplified view of your model and just can just make kind of un un working with uh, the model a little bit easier. Now, of course, this one is simplistic to begin with, but a real life uh, Power BI model can have uh, 50 to 100 tables sometimes and can get really complicated, but this would help you keep it straight. Often there are multiple subject areas. So just by creating these, these different views for different subject areas, uh, or, or actually the, uh, the right term here is layout. So different layout for this diagram view or this relationship view uh, can help you kind of keep things straightforward. Now, 
what I would say is when I saw this, then I started craving for one other feature, which actually has existed for a long time in, believe it or not, Power Pivot. So Pivot is Power BI's cousin that lives inside Excel. It's pretty much the same engine, uses, uses the same DAX uh, and same relationship model. Um, now, this one has had the feature called perspectives. Now perspectives may look similar to layout. So here, uh, this is how you define perspective. So here I've defined a sales only perspective with the limited set of table. And I'm going to switch to that from here. So I'm going to switch to, let's say sales only table. And you would see that it has just, you know, the simpler set of tables, or if I can switch to budget only table, but it is so much more than layouts. Now perspectives get defined in the model so that not just the author, but the end user can connect to that specific perspective as well. So this is where it really comes in handy. Uh, so once an author defines the perspective, then an end user connecting into that single source of truth can select the perspective that they want to look at, the perspective that they want to see. Now this is how it looks like when an end user is connecting to that model. It just asks you, hey, what do you want to connect to? Would you like to see the complete model? Or it does have these perspectives defined and you can choose just those perspectives. And so let's see how it's going to look from the end user. So here I have an Excel file, which doesn't have the data model, is connected to the data model that I showed you with the perspectives defined. And I have one pivot table here, which is connected to the uh, the model itself. And you can see this has everything that the model offers. This has all of the tables available there. Now, uh, I have another pivot table, which is connected only to the sales perspective. So notice this does not have the budget table. So it's a simplified perspective. And the next one is only connected to the budget table. So only has those tables. Now again, imagine a complex model 50 to 100 tables, an end user, for the first time they start connect to connect to that model, it can be overwhelming for them looking at all those tables and all their values. So here, you can give them a step-by-step -step access, uh, allow them to connect to a very simple perspective. Once they're used to that, then they can move beyond. Or if you have multiple subject areas, you can have them, hey, if you're looking for movies data, connect to this perspective. If you're looking for uh, reviews data, connect to that, something like that. So perspectives can be pretty useful. Now, of course, that exists in Excel, as I showed you in Power Pivot, but it's not there in Power BI. Now, the modeling view is great, and I would love to see the perspective feature there as well. So I have just submitted an idea for that and I would love to get your votes for that. So we'll link that down below. Make sure to give it, go head over to that site and vote for it. Number two is about one of the biggest changes in Power BI ever delivered, which is composite models. And the good news is that it's now generally available. So I'm going to link to the video where I've covered composite model in detail. Once you're through with this video, you can go ahead and watch that by clicking on uh, the link up here or down in the description. Number three is a set of features around reporting. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. The first one is the ability to expand and collect collapse column, essentially, it's going to make your matrix look more like a pivot table in Excel. So here in this matrix, I'm using the new feature. So let's focus on this. And you can see it's it's quite like the pivot table that we all used to and love. So you can kind of expand uh, a specific thing. And of course, this is all custom. This is you can add in whatever you want in these rows and build it the way you want. Uh, you also have options to kind of right click and say ex uh, expand uh, entire level and things like that. So you can turn it on by going to the row headers and just turning on the toggle, the plus minus icon thing. Now, what I would say is that I don't feel I mean, this is quite like a pivot table, but this, uh, in my mind, is not a real substitute for a pivot table. Anybody who is used to Excel and is uh, you know, familiar with Excel for and have been using it for many, many years, I've seen them fly through a pivot table, and it's got so many functionalities built in. So the best way to deliver that is to give them an Excel pivot table connected to the Power BI single model, single source of truth. Now, of course, so Power BI, the current plus minus icon is a great addition. But if you really want a pivot table, then create a pivot table in Excel, 
connected to your model. The next feature in the reporting section is ability to copy paste between desktop. Now, of course, it's going to be handy if you have elements like uh, your company logo or some text, which you can, uh, you know, just kind of copy from one Power BI desktop file and just paste to another desktop file, making it very convenient. Now, you can also select uh, gra uh, graphical elements and, and, you know, tables and cards and matrices and all of that and copy paste it across models. Models. Now, of course, uh, it's it's going to work if the models are alike, if they have the same structure. If it's not the same structure, it will copy, but you'll have to fix it after you copy paste into the new model. Now, I do have a, a word of advice, some caution here. If you do find yourself building multiple similar models, you have you have gone wrong somewhere, my friend. Mostly the reasons have people have behind building similar models can be solved much more effectively by other means. By either building a single model which has all of the data instead of building multiple models, or by building a single model and if you're looking for security, providing adding row level security to your model. The next feature in the reporting section is the updated filtering experience and this one I certainly like. Now this is a preview feature so you would have to turn it on and for existing files you would have to go to the report settings and turn it on over there and this is what it looks like. So here we have the new and beautiful filtering pane. So this, the uh, the way I understand it is that this filtering pane is going to stay available, but that one is meant for authors, for authors to set uh, uh, visual level, page level, report level filters and all of that. And it's always going to be there. But again, that's meant for authors that uh, that does feel a little geeky too. This is a simplified version, which as you see, even visually kind of blends in with the report, looks like a part of it. And this is meant for end users. Now it's got a lots of features in there you can lock the filters or some filters so that the end users cannot change it uh, otherwise uh, end users are able to change it here uh, you also have a very fine control about the way it's displayed uh, the formatting expanded collapsed all of that and uh, i also wanted to show you how th how this looks in the powerbi.com published report here it is in uh, in the browser on the powerbi.com site and you can see it feels it feels very seamless and has a much cleaner look to it. Number four is about color saturation and conditional formatting. So this has been simplified in the models now. So now when you're authoring and uh, earlier, some elements had a separate color saturation field right there and you had to drop something in there to add color saturation. But for others, we had the conditional formatting. So now for tables, matrices, column charts and other elements, it's all combined into a single way to add this formatting. And you can activate that by going to data colors and looking at advanced controls. So for this one, advanced controls, I mean, there, there are the standard options built into that and this might expand even more as Power BI progresses but right now they're pretty flexible you can use a color scale which I'm using right here and uh, and for the other one where I think I was using uh, well uh, I think I was using rules well you have rules as well and of course you can use a specific field value as well to provide your color so the same kind of functionality but now it's simplified uh, and it has one way of setting it using advanced controls or conditional formatting for all of these visual elements. Number five is a new feature in the Q&A Explorer. Now Q&A is one of those features which has been hit or miss whenever I've tried to implement it with a client, but it's also the one that holds the most promise because when you can get it to work, it's a thing of beauty, it blows people away. So let's look at the most recent addition to this. Now a Q&A Explorer is where you can drop in a button which allows the users to in, start the Q&A experience and and uh, you do that by simply going to buttons and just add, uh, add the Q&A button so that's what I've already done so now what the user is going to do is when they click on this button then this is going to pop up and you can also as an author add uh, specific questions to seed them to give them ideas of the type of questions that you can ask so i'll talk to you about the recent change which is well it's it's easy to show you so ask a related question so let's say if i say 
country in Europe and and bear with me here so country in Europe and then I say cool I got the countries in Europe but I want to ask something about that and that's when I'm going to I click ask a related question and then I'll say well okay so for those country uh, show me the sales and great so you can see it remembered the context I didn't have to say that again let's uh, try something else those country by sales comma budget uh, I don't know can I say by month I love that too crazy oh, that didn't work let's try this Oops, <laughs> I guess we'll stick to sales. But uh, the idea here is also that it's, it's, all, it's a bit of an interrogation. It's a bit of a dialogue going back and forth. And if you noticed here, that it does keep the, the history of your conversation. So obviously I'm working with AdventureWorks here, so it, it didn't feel uh, uh, pretty good over here. But you can imagine a, a whole conversation where you kind of go back and forth and this keeps those conversations. So this is again a great addition to something which is a promising feature to begin with. My best advice to somebody who who's implementing Q&A is it's best to create a separate model based on your original model which is tuned only for Q&A. That, that's how I've gotten the best results with Q&A and focusing on starting with the top five questions which are most frequently asked and which you would want the model to answer. Just Get, get the model smart enough to answer that and then keep working on the next questions. Now there's one thing that I would like to see in that Q&A. Now um, uh, I would love to see that just you know the, just the formatted a little bit like what we used to seeing messages back and forth. I just think that would be really cool. Now what updates are you waiting for in Power BI? Uh, add them in the comment below so that we can all vote for them and you can access the complete playlist with all the highlights for all the recent Power BI updates right here or down in the links below. Now these Power BI updates sometimes make me feel overwhelmed. Sometimes I feel like I'm running on a treadmill. Now I want to rem remind you that it's it's not about that. When you're learning Power BI, especially when you're getting started, you're best served by focusing on the core, by focusing on the 20% concepts th that's gonna give you the 80% of the results. And for that, my Power BI tutorial is a great place to start. I'll see you next time, Power On. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power On, my friends.